Hello, my name is Rosie. And I'm Charlotte. And we're rangers for Exmoor National Park Authority. Welcome to our self-guided seashore safari tutorial video on Linmouth Beach. Linmouth is a great place for rock crawling. However, most of the creatures we find today you could find in any rock pool on any beach. So hopefully you find this guide useful. I've got a tide timetable which I bought from the National Park Centre. Or you can look up the tide times online. Tides are very changeable. Here's what it looks like at low tide. And this is high tide. All the creatures you're looking for are here. In order to have the best chance of finding things, you want to go rock pooling at low tide. Start at the bottom of the beach and work your way up. And keep an eye on that tide because it comes in fast. It's much nicer and a bit safer to do rock pooling in nice weather. So maybe don't choose a rainy day. Those rocks look quite slippery today. I'm going to try and wear footwear that I can get wet, but will protect me from the sharper rocks and provide me with some grip. You don't really need anything to go rock pooling, but an old tray or an old bucket might come in handy, or a net for catching creatures. Just make sure you leave the creatures where you found them, and remember to take your trays and your buckets back to the shore with you. Let's go! I'm going to carefully turn each rock over and put it back how it was, before turning the next one. When we turn over rocks, often the water goes very murky. We've got to be patient and wait for it to clear. Oh look, wow, he was fast. Okay, so that was a shore crab. And we know this for a few different reasons. The first is his behaviour. Every species behaves differently, and shore crabs are wimps. They just want to run away and hide. They're the most common of the larger crabs in the rock pools. A crab's shell is known as its carapace, and the top of this dude's carapace is spiky. They also come in lots of different colours. I found another crab, but this time it's not a shore crab, it's an edible crab. Edible crabs always try to blend in by pretending to be a stone. Most of them are a similar colour to this one, and they have a pie crust edging to their carapace. Let's put him back. I've noticed this shell was moving in a very unusual way, so I've picked it up to have a look at it. Inside there's a hermit crab. It looks like some common prawns have come to investigate him. I found this porcelain crab clinging underneath one of the rocks. You have to be very gentle with them because they're very small. They have lots of tiny hairs all over to help them blend into the rocks and they never get bigger than about four centimetres. Look how well he blends in. I've been lucky to spot this one. Now I'm not going to pick him up because this is a velvet swimming crab and velvet swimming crabs are fighters. As you can see the red eyes and strong swimming hind legs let me know from far away which crab this is. They're amazing to watch though. Wow so this one is quite special. You're less likely to see this one on other beaches. This is the bodybuilder of the crab world, the Montagues crab. They have big claws and a heavily armoured carapace. Their survival strategy is to look big and scary. As you can see, they're actually quite harmless. Well, I think that's all the crabs we can find today. I wonder what else we might see. Look at this gorgeous snakes lock anemone. Anemones look like a plant, but they're actually an animal. Let's see how this one reacts to a small piece of seaweed. It's worth mentioning that because anemones are animals, they hunt tiny creatures and they kill them by stinging them with their tentacles. These shouldn't hurt people very much, but we don't recommend you touching them. Snakes lock anemones have photosynthetic algae in their tentacles, so they rarely retract them. Most other anemones close up to preserve their moisture when they're out of the water, like this beadlet anemone is doing here. This strawberry anemone is in the water, 
but it's decided not to open quite yet. Over here, I found an amphipod, which is a kind of sandhopper. Sandhoppers are sometimes known as sand fleas. This refers to their jumping abilities. Adults spend winter buried in sand up to 50 centimetres deep. They are an important food source for birds. I've seen loads of different seaweeds today. Seaweeds aren't plants either, they're algae. Bladder rack is really fun to walk on because it sounds like bubble wrap. This is because it has air sacs in its fronds which help it to sit higher in the water so it can access more light. This looks like seaweed made from stone, but it's actually a sandworm cast. These beautiful structures are made by worms to help them stay safe from predators. Now this is probably the weirdest thing we're going to look at today. This is an animal. Yes, an animal. It's called sponge and it's one of the most primitive animals alive. Sponges have no mouths or body structure and they feed by pumping water through their pores. This is called bryozoa or sea mat. Bryozoa is a colony of tiny animals which filter feed in the water. In the UK, there are two main species of sea mat. One is rectangular shaped and the other is oval shaped with tiny spines around the edges resembling hairs. I found a type of starfish called a brittle star. I'm going to be very careful with it because if it gets frightened, its limbs will drop off. It can grow new ones, but I don't want to stress it. That first one was a tiny species. This one here is a common brittle star. It's a little bigger, but still only about five centimetres. I've seen lots of different mollusks today, different types of snails. The one I've seen most of is common periwinkle. There are also lots of strikingly beautiful top shells. And lots of limpets. Most of the rocks have these very strange patterns on. This is because when the snails and limpets feed, they have a spiky tongue called a radula, which scrapes the algae off the rocks in pretty shapes. I've also found some empty limpet shells, which look like this. This tells me that there's a predator about, but not a very scary one. This is a dog whelk. Dog whelks climb on the limpet's back and drill a hole through the top of the shell and suck the limpet out. I found an equally suspicious looking character over here. This is an isopod. Warning, the next fact is a bit graphic and very gross. This looks like a woodlouse because it is closely related. That's not the scary bit. Most of the marine isopods are parasites and some eat fish tongues. I mean, it literally climbs into the mouth of a fish and eats its tongue. That's the scary bit. It then sits in the fish's mouth and does the same thing I do with chocolate anytime I'm told I have to share it. When the fish eats something, the isopod eats a bit first and then passes the rest down the fish's throat. It would be a good sharer if it hadn't eaten the tongue of the fish it's sharing with. The main reason it doesn't keep all the food for itself isn't because it's a nice isopod either. I mean, you probably gather that from the tongue eating. But rather that the isopod gets protection by living inside the fish's mouth. Therefore, it needs to keep the fish alive so that it can keep safe. Let's see if we can find some fish before this isopod does. I know they're a bit far away, but sometimes in bigger pools you might spot something splashing. In this case, a shoal of bigger fish have come to the rock pools to hunt the fish trapped in there. There are a few other rock pool specialists you may well find. And this little fellow is a goby. This is a much bigger shanny. I didn't take him out of the water. He walked out by himself. Now for most fish this would be suicide, however shannies are well adapted for flopping about out of the water and propelling themselves along. Well it looks as if the tide is coming in now, so we should make sure we have put everything back as we found it and head up the beach. I really hope you've enjoyed rock pooling with us and I hope you get the chance to visit the beach soon and see what you can find for yourself.